Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. It's all about successfully running an incubator to hatch your own eggs. Stay tuned, learn how. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Okay guys, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. We're gonna talk about successfully hatching chicken eggs in an incubator. This is a big old unit. It does work like a charm and it doesn't matter how big the incubator is when you're doing chicken eggs, all the same factors and variables apply in terms of how to get your chickens ready, how to get your roosters ready, how to get yourself ready, and how to get that incubator rocking so that you have the best possible chance 21 days after starting that incubator going to have a whole flock of little peepers. So let's get into it and talk about some of the details that you need to be aware of to get ready for running your own successful chicken incubator operation. It might be two eggs, and in this case, it might be 300. Doesn't matter, it's all the same stuff. Let's figure it out together. So, like I mentioned earlier, guys, this is a really old incubator. I had it passed along to me from a friend. It says here at the top, favorite incubator, and it's made by Leahy Manufacturing in Higginsville, Missouri. I don't know how many thousand chicks have hatched out of this puppy over the years. If you could see here, there's a glass window. I've got two thermometers hanging inside, and I've got a third one that's further inside with a remote sensor in the house so I can see right away if there's any problems on temperature because there's a lot of details to temperature. Generally speaking, all incubators have a place to put your eggs. Now the fancy new ones have automatic turners. This one doesn't, I'm the automatic turner. But there you are, I got big trays like this. There's five of them in total. So that's where the eggs will sit. And I've got a fancy little, um, very old school tool that goes inside here and it's a bent piece of wire. And when I pull it out like this, it travels underneath all the eggs. It's just a big long bracket and it travels under all the eggs and turns them over. Do you know that a hen always has a way to figure out with every single egg that she has underneath her to keep it slightly tipped down and turn it several times every day that she's sitting on it. So if you don't have an automatic egg turner, you have to be the hen and you gotta keep the tip slightly down and you gotta turn it a little bit so that the membrane that's inside doesn't get attached and so that the baby inside has access to oxygen and nourishment as it develops over the 21 days from start to finish. So turning is necessary. So if you looked at these eggs really closely, there's a variety of sizes and colors and you can see that they're not shiny clean because you don't want to clean off your eggs before you put them in an incubator because you could damage what's inside. They obviously can't be cracked. If they're a little bit dirty, it's okay. If there's big chunks of nastiness on them, you probably don't want to use them. Now here's the crazy thing that's hard to imagine if you haven't really studied or understood or interviewed a chicken personally before. She is very capable of hatching her own babies and a hen that's able to hatch her own or wanting to hatch her own is called a broody hen. She fluffs up her feathers, makes a few really beautiful noises and she just doesn't want to move off the nest and she'll usually fight or be pretty fierce sounding at least to protect the nest. If she's wanting to be broody and lay eggs, what's very common is she'll find a hidden away place, maybe not a nesting box in your chicken coop, behind a lumber pile or under a hedge or some place where she can kind of hide, and she'll go back to that spot day after day and lay an egg. When she decides she's got the right size clutch of eggs, then she'll start to incubate. So here's the crazy thing. If you keep eggs just slightly tipped down for up to a week that are fertile, which means there's roosters and hens having fun, those eggs that are fertile, held at just room temperature, not too warm, a little cooler than room temperature maybe, think like under 20 degrees Celsius, under 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, I'd think better 50, 60 Fahrenheit, like 15 Celsius. For up to a week at least, they stay fertile. And at the point when the chicken turns on or the incubator turns on, that's when all the eggs are activated at the same time. So that's how a bird gets a whole family ready to go at once. She lays an egg every day or two when she's got her clutch ready she goes live. There's a magic temperature inside an incubator and a magic humidity level as well. The temperature is 37 and a half Celsius or 99 and a half Fahrenheit and most incubator thermometers have a line right at 99 and a half, 37 and a half because you don't want to go more than half a degree above or half a degree below. So kind of right in the 37 to 38 range in Celsius, the 99 to 99 and a half to 100 and a half range in Fahrenheit. 
And so I hope that you're tracking with that. You can basically save eggs for a week. And when you're saving eggs, keep in mind, you have to have a rooster in the house. Now, if you have too few roosters, you won't have a ratio sufficient for all the hens to be fertile. The roosters will generally do a good job if they're healthy and vibrant to breed as many hens as they can regularly, but usually the considered ratio that's used for a rooster to cover enough hens is about one to 10, one to 12. So if you had 30 hens, you'd probably want at least, well, two roosters might do it, three would be better. So three roosters, 30 hens, that'd be a good ratio. So if you've got those roosters active and you've got them with the hens and it's been there together for at least a week, then the eggs that you start to harvest should be fertile. You can take your roosters away for a few days and you'll still have fertile eggs. It's kind of crazy, but it might be a few days from when they arrive till the eggs are fertile. So you don't want to, you don't want to dance with danger there and have the uh, roosters arrive last minute and hope you have fertile eggs. And you don't want to take them away last minute and hope you have fertile eggs. They should be there before you start your incubator and once you've started your incubator. So critical to know on getting your eggs ready. Now, when I've got them like this, this is a whole case of eggs I've been saving for the week. So the bottom ones were from earliest in the week and the top ones are most recent. So these will have a slightly higher chance of hatching that are on the top and the ones at the bottom will have the lower chance of fertility. But every day, at least twice, generally three times, with a board propped on my workbench underneath this egg crate, I go like this. And then when I pass by about eight or 10 hours later, I have a board and I go like this. It's kind of like I just turned the eggs. So I'm actually moving them even before the incubator starts and keeping them at a cool temperature in the barn. So I've got fertile chickens, the right ratio of roosters to hens, I'm not washing off the eggs, and I'm rotating the eggs as I save them for up to a week before I get ready to go live in the incubator. And the goal is to get them in there all at the same time, turn it on, have a couple thermometers to confirm the right temperatures there, around 99 and a half, 37 and a half. Okay, so we've talked about um, the roosters, the hens, the temperature, rotating them even before you have the incubator live. I just want to also make a few suggestions and one is keep some notes. This is my incubator notepad and every year I have another page. I record how many eggs I put in each tray and how many chicks I pull out of each tray. I record if there was any incidences that were unique on the humidity going high or low outside the window I was shooting for or the temperature fluctuating outside the window I was shooting for. I note the fertility of my eggs hatching versus the eggs that I get from other people consistently because I've watched the ratio of my rooster to hens, I find my chickens' eggs hatch at a higher rate than the eggs I get from other people's chickens. Another thing to consider then is humidity. Now here's really crazy stuff about humidity and the magical day 18. There's a total of 21 days for a chick egg to hatch from a chicken. Sometimes mine start to hatch at day 20. I don't ever have any chicks do well that hatch at day 22. Like a day late never really works, a day early often does. So humidity. You gotta have a way for water to be in the incubator that's keeping a level of humidity. Now keep in mind that the only way that a chick is gonna make its way to that egg after having been inside there for 20 or 21 days is it's gonna use its little beak and it's gonna bust out of jail. It wants to be free. It's very beautiful to watch it happen. If you help a chick bust out, it'll die. Don't help a chick bust out. If it can't get out of the egg, it won't make it. My wife has learned that the hard way. She's taken pity on so many chicks so many times, tried to help them out because part of the egg was attached to their feathers or they weren't strong enough to break out. We've never successfully had a, ch a chick hatch and live that we had to help break out. If it didn't have the ability to make it out on its own, it won't make it. So keep that in mind. But this eggshell is hard, right? Baby tiny chick that's been in there for 21 days have to have the strength to get out. Well, you have to have a humid environment, fairly humid the first 18 days and much more humid the last three. Do you know that a chicken not only, on day 18 she does a bunch of stuff different than the prior 18 days. On day 18, she decreases her body temperature by a degree she increases the humidity underneath her from 40 or 45 up to 75 plus. And on day 18, she stops turning her eggs. The last three days, you don't turn them. Do you get all that? Is that not crazy? Chickens got this figured out. I get angry when people say chickens are dumb. Chickens are not dumb. They got crazy cool instincts and they know how to survive. Any country I've ever traveled in in the world, 
I see chickens cruising around with their young. They know how to get it done. They get bread, they find a place, they lay a clutch, they get broody, they hatch out their babies, they show them where food is, they protect them from danger. They're survivors. Chickens are awesome, right? So your humidity, you want it at 40 to 50% the first 18 days. And on day 18, when you stop turning completely, you don't rotate the eggs anymore. On that day, you want to get your humidity to go up. You want to get it to 75 points plus. So you use a hygrometer to measure the humidity. So I have a pan. In this pan, I put warm water in the bottom. And when the water's in there, simple principle, the more surface area you have of water, the higher your humidity will be. So I have this pan in the bottom of the, of the incubator for the first 18 days, and it keeps my humidity pretty consistently at about 45%. On day 18, when I stop turning, I have another pan that I put in. And when I add that pan, the humidity goes up 30 points, goes to 75. And that starts to soften the eggshell to create more opportunity, just like a hen would hatching out her own eggs, for the chicks inside to break out. Isn't that cool? I'm just going to show you one other thing. I've got five trays in here. And my fifth tray is one I built myself because... When I got this incubator off a friend, it only had four trays, but there was space for a fifth. So I built a fifth one. And you can see it's just got mesh in the bottom, stapled to the underside. So lots of air can pass through because there's a big fan at the top and there's a heater at the bottom and the fan is just moving the heat around. So it's always circulating with the goal of similar heat everywhere. So I have to manually turn these. So I just slightly turn the eggs a little bit and always keep the pointy part a little bit down, which is what the hen always does in her nest. And what I've read and heard, and I believe it to be true based on my experience, crazy is that within every 24 hour cycle, a hen typically turns her eggs an odd number of times. I don't know what the predisposition is to an odd number of times, but my magic go-to is three. Three times every 24 hours, I turn the eggs. So I usually do them right away, first thing in the morning when I get up, I do them after work or when my kids are getting home from school. That's kind of my reminder time, so late afternoon. And then I do them as late as I can in the day before I go to bed. And those are the three times that I turn the eggs. So that's one thing to note. The final thing that I want to suggest to you is just uh, what to do when the chicks hatch. And there'll be another video coming along later related to caring for the chicks and setting up your coop when the babies are hatched. But when the babies first hatch, they're wet. They're coming out of a wet embryonic state and they've been virtually immobile in there. And a lot of people want to immediately pick them up and cuddle them when they're wet. And what happens is usually, compared to any place outside the incubator, it's going to be colder than inside the incubator where it's 99 to 100 degrees. So here's what you should do. Leave them alone. Do you know that chicks get mailed by air delivery all over the world? People order chicks that have been flown in to where they live. That happens all the time with heritage breed exotic chickens. And a chick has so much energy inside its body when it first hatches, it can go 24 hours with no food and no water. I'm not recommending that long, but what I'm saying is don't hurry to get the chick out of the incubator into some other place where you think it's gonna be better for it. It's way better to leave the chick six or eight or 10 hours in the incubator while lots of them are hatching Every time you open the door, open the lid, open the roof, open the cover, you're going to totally disrupt the humidity level and you're going to lose all the heat in the incubator. So that's going to be a real shock to the system of every chick. If it stays in a dark, warm place where it's already been for the last 20 days, it's not going to be upset. It's going to hear other little brothers and sisters peeping and chirping. And it's going to be quite fine in there to break out of its shell and just it'll, you'll hear lots of peeping, which is beautiful. That doesn't mean you have to hurry in. Just keep the door closed, keep the lid on it, let them do it. I wait for a full day when it's been day 20, when there's lots hatched. I pull out all the trays, take photos, say, welcome to the world, beautiful things. And I pull them all out and put them the place I've prepared under a heat lamp with food. I give them all a drink of water and put them in a warm place with food. But then I close it up again, get the humidity back up, and I let it go another day. And the second round hatches, and at that point, we turn off the incubator and we're done. Day 20, day 21. Okay? One other thing to keep in mind, guys. Not all the eggs are going to hatch. You'll probably do really well 
if you get better than 60% hatching. If you get 70 or 80%, way to go, you rocked it. There's a lot of reasons why eggs don't hatch, but if you're getting 60, 70%, I'd consider that success. Well done. I'm sure there's ways to do higher output, and I have got higher output at times, but I think that's a great goal. So you know the saying, don't count your chickens before they hatch? Exactly. Putting 50 eggs in doesn't mean you're gonna automatically get 50 chicks out. Another thing to keep in mind, it's usually a 50-50 mix of boys and girls. And when they hatch, they all look pretty similar. There might be black or brown or yellow, but you won't be able to tell boys from girls by looking at them. You might tell from behavior. There's always gonna be some dominant ones in the flock who wanna do some chest bumping and act like they're fighting within the first day. There's sometimes a bully or two that you have to remove. So you're gonna have boys and you're gonna have girls. And if you live in a place that doesn't in your bylaws allow boys, You'll know soon enough, probably by three and a half to four and a half months when the roosters start to crow who the boys are and who the girls are and you'll have to decide what to do. The other thing is, yeah, chicks are cute, but just like puppies, they grow up into being big dogs. So have a plan for all of them before you turn that incubator on and have fun with it. Okay guys, so that's a wrap on successfully incubating your own chicken eggs. We've covered everything from how to get your chickens ready how to get your roosters ready, how to get yourself ready, how to get the incubator ready, all the right times and temperatures and details and rhythms for the most likely chance of a successful hatch of chicken eggs in an incubator. So until next time, keep on hopeful, helpful, healthy with Sustainable Stace. If you've been watching this on YouTube, thanks a lot for watching. Just wanna encourage you to go down there in your bottom right hand corner way down there, way past the incubator and subscribe. And if you subscribe there, then you'll regularly get an email each time we put out a new resource that's hopeful, helpful, and healthy from Sustainable Stace. Thanks for watching.